Downwell is an indie roguelike release from 2015, eight years ago. Now, in case any of those words confuse you, a roguelike is a game that's like Rogue in that it is a game with procedurally generated stages and random item drops. The most famous examples of these games are The Binding of Isaac. Isaac kept to himself, playing with his toys as his mom watched porn and gets naked. Enter the Gungeon and more recently Hades. Everybody in chat give a warm, warm, warm welcome to Courtney, the lovely voice of Aphrodite. Hello, hello, little godling. Trans rights are human rights. Fuck turfs. I haven't played these two, not because I couldn't, but because the way reviewers talk about them is Enter the Gungeon, but better. And I hate Enter the Gungeon. <laughs> Enter the Gungeon has a rather simple gameplay loop. Go to the first floor, shoot out all the guys, find a weapon, fight the boss. Repeat six times. That would get pretty boring after 150 hours or so. The weapons you find are all random, the bosses you fight are all pulled out of a small pool. Now. Let's say the weapon you get is the best in the game, and the boss you fight is way easier than the others because of the density of the bullet hell. If you were to win that round of a roguelike, would you feel satisfied? Would that be fun? No, you would hate yourself for not being able to play the game without rolling sixes. And if you lose, are you motivated to try again and get better, or are you spiteful because the entire reason you lost is that the game picked a different number from the pile? No matter how you play, you always feel cheated. That's just me, though. You can enjoy gambling all you so like. So the game is a fucking slot machine that will occasionally just let you win instantly. Then, uh, they decide halfway through, oops, we turned our game into a slot machine. And it's like, so what the fuck? Okay, okay, like, Edmund, I'm sorry you realized a little too late that your game just lets people win sometimes. Will you continue to play Binding of Isaac after saying all this? Yes! So, why do I like Downwell so much? Full disclosure, this is your warning. If you want to go into this game blind, it's only $3. I bought it on the Devolver Digital Sale for $0.98, cents, but... This isn't a Doki Doki Literature Club style twist. It is exactly what it says on the tin. Good luck. Did you beat it? No, because it's freaking hard. In Downwell, you jump down, wait for it. Oh well. Yeah. You choose the character you want to play as, then you go down a cavern with frogs and slimes. You can find weapon pickups and gem depots or even shops. Then you pick an upgrade, then go through the catacombs with skulls and ghosts, then water with turtles and squids, then limbo. Then you fight a boss. A full run is about 15 minutes. To do one full run, it took me about nine hours. It's not Fun. The balancing is absolutely abysmal. The candle is useless and gem powered literally moves half the challenge from the game. The shotgun gun module combined with gem powered makes you able to just stop falling. Some of the upgrades are worthless early game, but near required late game, which means that picking them up, you just have to hope that you didn't waste this run buying something useless or wait for it to show up in rotation again. The catacombs are almost impossible, but water and limbo are essentially shooting fish in a barrel. The boss is a cakewalk if you have laser and impossible if you have noppy. What? What the f noppy? The, the, but the point is that roguelike's bad, but not this one. This one is slightly above average. Let's take a look back at Limbo. The game has a combo system. The more enemies you kill before touching the ground, you can get some rewards. Getting more than 8 gives you 100 gems, 15 gives 1 energy, and 25 gives 1 hit point. The ability to string these combos together is how you get health back, ignoring the weapon modules. In Limbo, there isn't solid ground. The only ground you can touch is in the time voids, which don't end the combo, but you also don't have to kill any enemies in Limbo either. There's no reason to shoot these guys, especially after you have more than 25 combo. The effects just don't stack. One of the achievements is to get a 30 combo, but it's impossible not to if you get this far, unless you deliberately go pacifist. Limbo doesn't have any use for the upgrades other than the heart balloon because you'll never run out of energy with the abundance of remnants of a previous life. A newspaper, a car, a CRT. It's dark and foreboding in a way that the game might not have seemed up to this point. I feel as though Limbo is one of the most fascinating places in gaming because of how it recontextualizes everything that came before it. Not in a Kojima plot twist way, but in a Dark Souls way where instead of going, HOLY SHIT, you go, Yeah. The soundtrack certainly adds a lot to this atmosphere too. The first track that plays in the caverns is called Ouroboros, deliberately acknowledging the circular nature of the roguelike prison which you have been placed within. It's a pretty average chiptune beat being hopeful and still threatening. Which fits, as I too feel those exact emotions when I see frogs. Then there's the catacombs. We were fine until you showed up. 
The player is placed as the invader on this ecosystem, which makes sense considering how the enemies in this section are more passive. The skulls just hop around. The floating skulls are the only enemy whose behavior change when they take damage. Then the water level. Razor Girl is a haunting melody that pierces through my soul, and the composer knows this because the piano arrangement is the last song on the Bandcamp album of the soundtrack. And we return to Limbo. How does this level recontextualize the earlier levels? Well, this is what the soundtrack is. Goofy ah ah tecker type beat. Limbo's music is placed at the forefront, as enemies no longer make noise, you no longer make very much noise on account of you not causing explosions every few frames, and most importantly, there are no enemies. The previous tracks were all chiptune, but this is electronic, and immediately after Limbo is the Abyss, home of the entity only referred to as the boss. Kill it, roll credits, and see what you've been searching for this entire time. This broke me. I had spent nearly a dozen hours of my life trying and failing in hopes of finding something more substantive at the bottom of the well. I had killed adorable frogs, bats, disturbed the resting place of hundreds of innocent souls, ignored the water levels, and went through literal hell before facing a gauntlet where I was forced to relive each one of those again and again, only to find a cat. I hate playing this game, I hate everything it stands for, and I was promised something more beautiful. But when I saw that cat, I realized that, that this was everything I had been fighting for. This game was developed by one man for Steam and iOS simultaneously. That shouldn't be allowed. Video games are meant to introduce a story with which the players even agency over the story as a way of engaging deeper with the audience. But that's the opposite of what roguelikes are even for. Roguelikes are created for pure entertainment, except maybe Hades, but I haven't played that and I won't play it, so stop emailing me. We have two opposing philosophies here. Video games are high art. Video games are mindless slop to turn your brain off to and let dopamine rush as you are subtly fed propaganda. Downwell is wonderful because it breaks down this distinction. The game is clearly a dopamine rush. It was designed for mobile phones at the very least, but at the same time holds darkness when peeking just below the surface. I wouldn't go quite as far as to say this is an example of stain play, but it comes pretty close. Let's look back at Limbo, because I feel like it's the most important piece of the puzzle in finding exactly what this game has to say. After going through the most stereotypical video game areas in existence with the most arcadey, unrelentingly simplistic, and chaotic gameplay style, we are yanked out of that experience to find half of those mechanics be completely irrelevant, and for the music to completely change genres. But it's still just as internally stupid as the rest of the game. The concept of falling so far down a well you go to a literal endless void between life and death is incredibly silly. What it's trying to say is that there's no difference between the two. Downwell is less of a way of making the audience feel joy as an expression of a pure love of the medium. AAA games in 2015 weren't exactly doing so well. Fallout 4 just bombed, MGS5 was incomplete, and the best game was made by a small team in Poland. Dandelion, quick, let's have gay sex! All these were trying to elevate the medium. How do we make video games better and more appealing to a wider audience, they said. And the answer was to inject big ideas into them. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but the almost comically regressive nature of Downwell is exactly the kind of way to combat that. Downwell is one thing that almost every other game of the time wasn't. It was honest, in a way that was just as stupid and fun as the olden days. To claim that in order for games to be taken seriously, they need to revoke anything that's fun in favor of sweaty middle-aged men is ridiculous on the face of it. Games don't need to be more fun than a cat at the bottom of a well. They could be, but the loop is always going to be more engaging.